things that you care about, the people in men and constellations did the same thing. So on one of your star charts, we've got a zoomed out version of this area of the night sky. This is Orion, the hunter. Yeah, that's my brother's name. All right, really cool name. So on the left, on the left you have a really good photo taken by an astronomer that goes far fainter than you can see with the naked eye. So you can see all this nebulosity, but you can see the brightest stars, Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, Alilam, Alitak, and Mintaka. Yes. J.K. Rowling, who wrote Harry Potter, named a lot of her characters after bright stars in the night sky. Sirius, Regulus, Bellatrix. So she mined this history of culture that we've got to name her characters, give them slightly magical names. So this is Orion. We've got Orion's head, his shoulders, his belt, his sword, his knees, his upraised shield, and his club ready to strike. Now, his sword is in his sheath in there. It depends how you imagine it. Some people imagine this as a sword, some imagine it as a club. Some imagine this as a shield, some imagine it as a bow. Yeah. Have you imagine imagination? <laughs> now, from, a, from Australia, we see Orion upside down, like this. We're on the other side of the planet to where people came up with the stories, so Orion is drunken upside down. Still got his club, still got his shield. And Orion is surrounded in the night sky by lots of animals. So the stories that they had in ancient times were that Orion was the greatest hunter of all time. See him here fighting against the bull, Taurus, next to the twins, next to the unicorn, with his two hunting dogs, the little dog and the big dog, with at his feet the hare that he slew while he was out hunting, stood on the banks of the river Eridanus. He's also got the whale over here, which I don't know if he fought, but it's certainly there in the sky with him. Yep, his shield in this artwork is a lion's head that he's using as a shield. So the story the Greeks had was that Orion was the greatest hunter, and his abilities got so good that they threatened the Greek gods, and the Greek gods were notoriously jealous and angry people. So they decided they couldn't do with a human that had anywhere near the skill that they had. So they sent down a scorpion to kill Orion. They sent down the most venomous scorpion. Scorpius, yeah. And Scorpius was successful. The scorpion scuttled up behind Orion as he was fighting the bull and stung him in the heel. Killed him. Once he died, the gods realized that they'd been stupid um, because the Greek gods were fallible. They put Orion up in the night sky so that everybody could see his mighty. But they honored the scorpion as well by putting the scorpion in the night sky. But obviously the scorpion and Orion were enemies, so they put them on opposite sides of the sky. So whenever Orion's rising at one side of the sky, Scorpius is setting at the other. Orion is forever chasing the scorpion, trying to get his revenge. But at the same time, whenever Orion's setting, the scorpion's rising on the other side of the sky, chasing Orion. So they're locked forever chasing one another, never to meet. And he's surrounded by all the animals he fought, with his hunting dogs, and with the hare that he killed. Yay. So that's Orion. Yep. Did he kill him? Um, I don't know all the stories because there are as many stories as there are different cultures and different people who tell the stories. But there are some really good books out there um, which have loads of the stories. And I had one when I was growing up called The Constellations. It's about this thing. And it's got some of the mythology, some of the stories with them. But what you'd find with a constellation like Orion, it looks so human-like that many cultures around the planet viewed it as a hunter or a person. A lot of the other constellations, though, different cultures put totally different things in the sky around them. So they came up with different stories. This is a scorpion, the other side of the sky. Yeah? Um, every night I can see the Orion's belt. Yeah, Orion's really visible for us in the summer. So at the moment, you can't really see it, the sun's in the way. But if you're out in the summer, Orion's nearly overhead in the late summer. It's really spectacular. Scorpius... This constellation is visible overhead right now, and it's right in the middle of the Milky Way. If you look at Scorpius and give your eyes 10 or 20 minutes to properly adapt to the darkness, you'll see the glowing band of the Milky Way going overhead, and the brightest part of that band is just here around the Scorpion's thing. So this is on the other sheet of paper you had. On the back side, you have Scorpius, among other things. See the head of the Scorpion, the body of the Scorpion and its red beating heart, down to its sting down here. The head, the body, and the sting. So you see this, the head and the claws coming out here, 
the body going down and the curved up stick. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the constellations next to this is Sagittarius the Archer, which looks to me like a teapot, looks to a lot of people like a table. So there's lots of constellations all around the sky that look different things to different people. We see what we're familiar with, we see what's important to us. So there is a question right at the back. Yeah, um, well, how many constellations do you think there are to possibly make? Um, we can see with the unaided eye on a really clear night at any time about 6,000 stars. That's roughly the number we can see to the faintest stars, which means there are probably 12,000 across the whole sky that are bright enough to see with the unaided eye. How many different ways could you join 12,000 dots together? That's how many constellations we could imagine. Now, typically we make the constellations out of the brightest stars, so you can maybe narrow that down to a thousand stars, say, to make the constellations. Of 18 constellations, a thousand stars is 10 or 15 stars per constellation. How many different ways could you arrange a thousand dots? When you have a look at your bits of paper at some point, look at the different ways you guys join the same dots to make different patterns, different stories. That's how many constellations you can come up with. It's really awesome. Here, this is actually a photograph I took. We have one of the most famous constellations. Can you see it? Yeah. What do you see? We've not got the Scorpius, we've not got the Mount. Southern Cross. Oh, Southern Cross. Well said. Here, this is the smallest constellation in the night sky. It's really important down here in Australia though, because it's on our flag. These are the two pointer stars, Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri. This is the cross. See it better here. This is more zoomed in. This is the cross. The four bright stars are the fifth fainter star that you see as well. Smallest constellation. Next to it, you have a big dark patch, dark cloud of gas in the sky. Now, you remember I told you that astronomy is like a detective story. That big dark cloud of gas and dust, you see, you don't see many stars there. It's blocking out the light of the stars behind it. That's a cloud of gas and dust, so big that light would take a hundred years to travel from here to here. Remember, light travels to the moon in one second. And the sun in the sun in eight, eight minutes. minutes yeah. yeah. So a light is traveling at 300,000 kilometers every single second. And it would take 100 years to travel from end to end of that cloud. That's how big space is. And I'll come back if we have time to why that's an interesting clue. But the constellations we see are purely a result of our line of sight. Now, I apologize for the colors not showing up that well on the screen here. But what you've got top left is Orion. Again, Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, Alnila, Malnitak, and Mintaka, Saif, and Rigel. Here you have them as we see them on the sky, and here they are spread out as if we were seeing them side on. So what you're seeing here are the stars at their distances. And um, Betelgeuse, Bellatrix is the nearest of them. Just 240 years ago, the light left Bellatrix that we see tonight. Betelgeuse, 640 years. Alnilam is very bright but very distant, 1,400 light years away. So what I'm going to show you now, if I can, we're panning in here, and you'll see Orion in a moment, just as we move around. Betelgeuse. Let me get the zap up. There he is. Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, Alnitak, Alnilam, Mintaka, Saif, and Rigel. Our familiar shape for the body of the hunter. Now imagine we're moving through space, rotating around slowly. You see Bellatrix and Betelgeuse are the nearest. So you can see as we rotate round, the pattern changes. As we move through space, we're about to zoom out, back away from the constellation. The more distant stars like Alnilam, move less, the nearer ones rotate around more. So as we move around through space, the patterns in the sky will change. The constellations we see are purely the result of our line of sight. Now, if I look out at you guys, I see you all in a pattern. I see a constellation of students looking back at me. I see you all in certain directions, but every one of you, if you look around, will see your friends in different places against the background than I see you. I can make constellations out of you guys pretending that you're stars joining the dots. Everyone in this room would see each other in different positions, so we'll make different constellations of people. Now, if we rotate around to the other side, we get back to almost eventually having the same pattern, but not quite, so we keep going, whiz around, and as we move through space, the pattern changes. Now, the stars in Orion are some of the brightest stars we know, so we can see them a long way away, but you see how widely spread out they are in actuality. Bellatrix, the nearest one, is relatively close by, and Alnilam's a very long way away, and it's purely because of where we sit in the universe looking up, that for us, they form the picture of the Huntsman. And this is where we're going to be coming back in a second to get Orion the Hunter, as we know it, in the night sky.
almost there, just like that. So we're back to Orion with the sword, with the shoulders, with the head, and with the body. Almost back in the same place. And as we move back, zooming in, the start with the repetition. So, Jonty, can I ask how fast would we be like that picture? How fast Much, 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 much faster than the speed of light. So impossibly fast. Or that would have taken us a lot longer. It would have like three and a half million The colour of stars tells you their temperature. So have you ever seen a bit of iron or something being heated up in a fire? When it's cool, it glows orange, yeah? It, I mean, it's too hot to touch. But as you heat it up further, it gets white and then even blue. So the flame you have over a cooker is blue because it's really hot. A bit more complicated than that with the flame, but the stars shine with a colour that tells you their temperature. So our sun, which is a yellow star, is about 6,000 degrees at the surface we see. The deeper into the sun you go, the hotter it gets though. So in the middle it will be nearer to 10 million degrees. But the surface that we see is yellow because it's about 6,000. Beetlejuice at the bottom of Orion here is cool, red, and big. It's about 3,000 degrees. The blue stars you see around here are about 20,000 degrees. So the color tells us the temperature of a star. And that's one of the clues we can use to learn more about it.